So this is a continuation of a previous video where we're using dynamic components to lay out kitchen. So here's our first elevation and I've taken the time to put the cabinets and the walls on different layers and also create the other walls on their own layers too so we could get started laying out cabinets. So if I rotate around and then I can turn off the elevation A to get them out of the way so we can get to the construction lines on the two new elevations and begin dropping cabinets. I'm going to pick the layer that I want the new cabinets to be on and go get some dynamic components. We'll drop this drawer base in there and you'll see that it's rotated the wrong way. So if I change the axes, the red and the green, to a new orientation, then when I drop the dynamic components they'll be oriented the correct way and then I can switch the axes back later. So we'll go get a corner filler and corner fillers are about 50-50. They'll be rotated the way you want them. So I'll just rotate this one around. And then modify the size of my drawer base. And then I'm going to slide it over next to the filler. And then I can use the move copy command and start copying this drawer base down the elevation. When I get to the end here, I'm going to need to put a filler in between the wall and the end cabinet, so I'll grab, grab a base filler and drop it on the construction line. And, and then I can drag it over and use the wall to infer its location. We'll shrink it down to fit the opening. Oh, we got a little gap, so I'm going to add back a quarter inch to the width, and that'll be close enough for a filler. So we can move on to the other elevation. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to redraw that one filler so it takes on the materials. And then I need to change my axes again, so that when I drop cabinets along this elevation, they'll be oriented the correct way. So it looks like the first one I need is a base two door. And I'll drop it in next to the filler and go up and use my component options to change its size. And it looks like the one right next to it is also the base two door, so I can just use the move copy and create another one. And there's little reference points that help snap it on. So I'm moving copy. Oh, it looks like I got a smaller cabinet. Actually, it looks like a dishwasher with a panel. So I'm going to use a base one door to kind of make it look like a dishwasher. And we'll just rotate the pull so it's a flip down door. So I'll set the width. And now we'll go and get to the attributes that determine the location of that pull and they're uh, located on assemblies inside the cabinet. So there we go. We have the pull inset width, which is set half the width of the cabinet, and we'll move it up. And then I just need to rotate it, and that attribute is actually on the pull itself. There's a rotation angle, and I'll turn the rotation angle off to zero. And it looks like we need to move it up a little more. So I'm going to go back to those, to the door sub assembly and access the inset height and move it up an inch. Now we're going to want to change this pull to match a more contemporary pull. And there's a plugin by Sketch Data that uh, replaces the hardware. So we can pick a new SKP file to replace that SKP file. And it'll actually replace all the uh, base door cabinets. So we'll see that one gets replaced and you can see the base cabinets next to it also took on that new pull. So looking at the elevation it looks like there's two dishwashers, one on each side of the sink. So I'm just gonna move and copy this cabinet and then put a 36 inch opening for my sink base cabinet and then go and uh, grab a sink base. 
And we'll drop this two-door sink base between the, the two cabinets that are pretending to be dishwashers. And it looks like I'll need to, it comes in with a default pull, so I'm going to update those pulls to the, the D-bar pull. And while I'm thinking about it, I probably need to update the drawer fronts also. In the sketch data library, the pulls are determined or separated by base doors, drawer fronts, and wall cabinets. That way you can do a different type of pull for each type. So you could have knobs on your wall cabinets and a pull on your drawer front that's different than a pull or knob on your base cabinets. So I think we have one more cabinet to drop here at the end. It looks like it's a one-door cabinet. So I'll bring up the component options again and alter the width. It looks like I need to change the handing of the door. And also going to need to see, give it a finished end on the right side, which will apply the material and should return the toe kick for us. So at this point, I'm going to uh, pause the video. Uh, I've got to create the island which has some appliances and uh, add countertops and some sinks which might take a little bit of time so I'll be right back okay so now I've added the countertops and, and the sinks and I put the island on its own layer we can see it in there it's hard to see it behind that elevation A but with the layers, we can turn that back off again and see what different drawer cabinets and doors and a cooktop and a microwave under counter microwave. I turned off the ref points, which were those little construction points using the snap each cabinet. But now I can turn the other layers back on again and I've added some extra walls. And that's the, the whole kitchen there. And using the layers, you can kind of turn things on and off to both see things better. Thank you.